All right, if you have one of these Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbons, um, this model is specifically, let's see here, this is a sixth generation ThinkPad X1 Carbon. All right, if you're getting the, well, let me show you real quick. If you're getting this error message, oh, where'd it go? So basically the date and time is incorrect. It should pop up and then ask me to change the date and time. It restarted itself. So let's see here. Okay, so if you get this check date and time settings, press escape to continue or F1 to enter setup. Uh, let me show you how you fix that on this uh, Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon, okay? This is assuming you have this issue where every time you leave it off battery for a while or something, then you get this message, all right? So this is usually a bad CMOS, BIOS, or real-time clock battery, RTC battery, whatever you want to call it. First, we're going to shut it off. Okay, it didn't turn off, so I'm going to hold the button. Okay, we're going to turn it off. And then let me put this on the tripod or the thing to show you. All right, let's get to opening this thing up. So we're going to flip it over. It's pretty easy to open this. You just need a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver, and we're going to undo the screws from the bottom. Okay, so oh, let me actually get a thumbnail of this here. Okay. Let's go ahead and undo the screws. So there's three screws towards the back where the hinges are, and then two on the sides. These screws actually stay attached to the case, so don't try and pull them out. Okay, just undo it till you hear it click. Once you do that, we can go from the back here. Okay, you can see there's a gap. Just pull on this. If for some reason a side isn't pulling up, you're gonna go towards the middle. But if it isn't pulling up, you can just check the screw again uh, because sometimes the thread will kind of click back into place. All right, so it opens up like this and then you can just kind of wiggle it and pull that out. And there's the bottom cover. Okay. <clears throat> this uses a very specific size connector for the CMOS battery. Um, I do have a company that um, provided me with a link um, they do give me some kickback price wise. I'm not sure how they compare to other places. Um, but they sent me a few batteries to test. All right. So we're going to remove the four screws for this battery. Um, this one screw is missing somewhere. I don't know why, but it's missing. And I believe this battery looks like it's been changed before. So anyways, here's what the inside looks like. All right. After you remove all those screws, you go from this tab and you just pull it straight up. Battery model number. Is there one here? uh sb 10 k 97586 um but i would check what your battery model number is just to be safe because since this is aftermarket there's sometimes like some slight variations okay or you can just search specifically for sixth generation um think pad x1 carbon or something and then battery um and you should be able to find it anyways this is the cmos bios real-time clock battery so this is what it looks like let me zoom in here okay so I'll have to see if I still have um, that link so I can provide it to you guys. The company's pretty good. Um, if you send them pictures, they can help you find the correct battery. But anyways, to remove this battery, you just grab the wings here, wiggle this, and then you can peel this up. There's an adhesive. Okay. Oh, it actually peeled off really easily. That's weird. So this has an adhesive on it. Maybe somebody tried replacing this before. This battery's thinner than expected it should be like a cr2032 inside um, but this so the battery specifically is a cr2015 or 2016 i think cr2016 i don't know if you can see it come on focus there cr2016 lithium battery and then they have the part number there which is sb10l70751 so you might be able to find the specific battery with that information this battery says it was made in 2018, March 26. So that's what, seven years around there? Okay, anyways, <clears throat> we're gonna have to peel off this adhesive. So this is the company that sent me the CMOS batteries, Rome Tech. Okay, <clears throat> I'll try and put a link if I can find it. All right, anyways. <clears throat> so they do have all different kinds, so make sure you get the right one. I don't think they gave me any yeah they didn't put any model information or anything they do have a one-year warranty on the batteries and then they have this to tell you like if you have the wrong batteries then you can send them a picture um but 
yeah all right so one year warranty anyways so it's all wrapped in this baggie <clears throat> they sent me several and only for some reason this model was wrapped in like another baggie kind of interesting oh one thing to take note of <clears throat> when you go to replace the battery <clears throat> excuse me okay when you go to replace the battery so this connector is like smaller than most it's more like pinched in like more skinny um, but you want to take note of how the connector looks and also the color so you see the black wire and the red wire you want to make sure you know which side it's going into in this case it was plugged in this way where the red wire is going towards the inside of the computer and the black wire is going towards the outside of the computer okay this has its own little sticky pad so I'm gonna try and peel this old one off if I can because otherwise it might be too thick uh, this is interesting it has these little plastic things on this model which normally are for like speakers so I don't know where they have the actual oh they have these little speakers here so I guess on some models it has four speakers or something or they just change the placement all right so this sticky pad is kind of hard to get out okay carefully hopefully I can carefully peel it out without it tearing the adhesive seems to be separating okay so there we go the adhesive separated from this pad but we're just going to toss that we don't need it okay so again you want the red one going on the inside and then the black one going outside and you also want to compare the connectors so make sure that the pin holes are in the same spot you can see the pins are towards the top of the connector same thing with this one they mark this with a little whatever paint or something so you know which side is up maybe i'll do the same thing just so if someone replaces it in the future although this computer's seven years old i don't know if it's going to be replaced in the future it'll probably be the computer will be replaced so we're going to put a dot on there just so people know which side is up if they flip it or remove it and don't pay attention okay so now we just got to plug this in oh let me actually show you if because we want to test the battery as well to make sure the voltages um, I tested it earlier before I went to get the battery so I know that the battery's voltage is bad all right so we're gonna use this voltmeter here okay so let me show you what a good battery looks like so we'll just put them both here okay um, we'll show you what a good battery looks like and then we'll show you what a bad one looks like so this is a good one. It doesn't really matter which one you put red to black or black to red. All right. So the only difference is instead of a positive number, it will show a negative number. So we'll put this and you can see it's showing negative 3.291. Okay. That's the voltage. We'll go in here and do the same thing. All right. If you flip it, obviously it's just going to not show the negative. That's okay. That's because there's a DC. The batteries are direct current. Okay. So they have a directional flow. And here you can see when I put this, it's not even showing voltage. It's showing, let's see, it's showing resistance. What the heck? See, so it's it's so low voltage. It's not even showing voltage when it auto detects. It's showing resistance. Let me see if I can change that. Okay, here, this is like millivolts, I think, setting. Let's see here what it shows. Look, it's doing nothing. It's showing 64.3 millivolts. It's doing nothing, right? If I touch this, it shows zero. So even the air has more voltage than the battery. <laughs> what in the world? Okay, so let's go to this one now. Wait, is it even detecting properly? It's not detecting properly. What is going on here? It just made this go up. I don't know what's going on here. It's doing weird stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, on the auto setting, let's check it one more time. So this is the new battery. Okay, 3.29. And again, this one. <laughs> it just shows resistance ohms. Okay, anyways. Yeah, I don't know why, what the... I thought the MV is millivolts, but I don't know. I, for some reason, it's not showing anything. Okay, so anyways, this battery's bad, so we're going to replace it. So, again, we'll take this one, all right, and the connector. You, again, you want the red one going towards the inside of the computer, the black one going towards the outside. Just line it up, 
okay and then I always pinch both together you don't want to just push this way because sometimes the solder is not good for these connectors and if you push it it might rip those out so I always pinch like that okay and then you're gonna have to obviously reset the date and time one time okay so this was plugged in like this you want to make sure it goes around the screw mount because you don't want the screw to go into that thing okay so as you can see it has this extra wire on the other one they kind of had it I don't know how they were doing it, it was weird it was like sitting I don't know but anyways <laughs> we can we're gonna rotate it so that the extra wire is like going out of the way okay um, and the battery will just sit on there yeah because this is like a lot of extra wire I think they pulled it up slightly this way um, which you can do if you want all right we're gonna peel off this adhesive protective thing come on separate oh there we go okay I was peeling the adhesive up not the adhesive protective coating okay so if you want you can stick it the same way so that the tail goes out and isn't going on the foam okay just like this but then you gotta deal with all this excess wire here so there we go there's that battery okay you can push this extra wire out of the way and now we just got to get the main battery back in place and we should be good to go. All right, so that's the dead one. Zoom out a bit more, a little bit more. Okay, so now we got to get the battery back in and then we'll set the date and time back up. So this has little feet that go underneath these little slots here. So you want to slide it back in. Okay, line that up, push that down. And then I always like to push the battery up so that it goes all the way onto the slot, these metal tabs. Okay, so pull that up. And then we just got to put the screws back in. And that's pretty much it. We'll get the screws back in, get the battery or the bottom cover back on. And that's all there is to this. Again, you do want to set the date and time back up properly. Um, but other than that, that's all there is to it. All right. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing well to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, so if you saw, you slide the bottom little tabs in first and then you lower that down. All right, also if you can't contribute in that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Other than that, I do have another channel called It's Been Reviewed and More. Um, if you could uh, find that channel, it's the same profile picture but zoomed in and then um, watch a few videos, like and subscribe on that as well. I'm trying to get it to a thousand subscribers um, and it's a little over halfway there. Also, if you didn't notice, I twist the screws backwards till it clicks and then I tighten it down. That makes sure that the threads don't go in like diagonal or crooked and then end up destroying the screw mounts. All right, so there we go. Obviously, it's just gonna turn on again. Uh, depending on some computers, they need to be plugged in before they'll turn on again. This one seems like it's powering on without that. Like the power lights actually lit up. I don't know if you can see. Um, and also keep in mind, it's going to power cycle a few times. Hopefully there's enough battery life. Maybe I should just plug it in. But usually when the BIOS or CMOS resets, uh, the computer also power cycles a few times. So if you see that like the keyboard is lit up, but the computer's not actually on, that's normal. All right, so right now the keyboard is off. It's probably going to turn itself back on, assuming the battery didn't die right before I plugged it in. Oh, there you go turned itself on and then it's going to complain about the date and time we do have to change it one time oh i shouldn't have screwed the bottom back in because we do need to do a test where we disconnect the main battery one time to make sure that it held the charge okay uh, i think my customer's calling me right now but i need to finish this okay so it's gonna go back to the date and time thing okay f1 we're gonna go into the setup the bios okay all right, date and time, and it is, oops, March. So you have to hold shift and then press the plus button to go up, and then it's 2025. Okay, and the time is 7.48. Seven. I'm going to push backwards. So the negative, you don't need to press the space, oops, or the shift. 
All right, done. Then we'll just exit saving changes and that should be it. Again, I am gonna do one thing real quick. I'm gonna disconnect the main battery. Let's actually turn this off. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the main battery and then we're gonna press and hold the power button for 15 seconds to drain any residual power from the board. Um, and that way we'll verify if it really is just the CMOS battery that's the problem or if something else is causing that issue. Although I think the customer told me that it's been having this issue. So anyways, we'll pull this up. We'll take this screw out. I only need to take this one screw out because that's enough for me to pull this connector up. Okay, so we'll pull that up and hold that out so it's no longer, the battery's no longer connected. We're gonna press and hold the power button for 15 seconds, all right, or even more. And then we'll test it, okay. So a few more seconds, I'll hold it a few extra seconds just to be sure, okay, if you don't believe me. <laughs> all right, also if you think that um, the battery's still connected somehow, let me show you, I'm gonna push the button, okay and you can see it's not lighting up or anything. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and push that battery connector back down, and then we will put the screw back in. I'm pretty confident that that fixed the issue, so I'm just gonna put the bottom cover back on. Okay, get that screw in, the screw in, the screw in. And the last one. All right, so there we go. Now that we got that, let's go ahead and power it up. You can see the power light and the keyboard is lighting up. And you can see it immediately started up without waiting for that date and time screen and restarting multiple times. So that's how you know that's fixed. All right, so Windows is already booting. That's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye. One thing I forgot to show is they actually do have the model number on here, and you can see it's a RT, which is Rome Tech CMOS 26 battery, 3-volt lithium-ion. So they don't give the original part number models, but there you go. All right, hopefully that helped. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.